Okay, so in this episode, I'm going to answer the Quora question, why are liberals so shocked to find out there are other points of view other than their own? Wow, what a question. So it's a common expression that a good idea is a good idea no matter who has it. When conservatives say in so many words, the liberal is obsessed with pushing his or her own ideas and beliefs, I really have to wonder if they've been paying attention to how President Trump has operated, or the disgraced former President Trump. He and the Republicans have been doing that very same thing on steroids. You know, they've been obsessed with pushing their own ideas and beliefs. And, you know, that's really what they're known for. Then again, these people are by no means believers in small, limited government, especially not anymore. And it seems wrong to assume Republicans ever once were believers in small government, as they've stood for big government for the rich and well-connected, and for the military and prison industrial complex, which have merged and which they will further merge with their hideous and almost cartoonishly unconstitutional ideals of so-called Christian nationalism. Yes, most of these people cling to what has been called Republican Jesus, which ironically tends to look vastly different from the Jesus in the Christian Bible. So I've I've gone over some of this stuff before, and I know it's not 100% an original thing to point it out, but it really bears repeating. So let's look at the ways in which the Christian Jesus is different from Republican Jesus. You know, the actual biblical variety, the, the biblical version. For example, Jesus was actually not an immigrant basher as depicted in the Bible. So there's a quote. Here it is. It says, the alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So that's Levit Leviticus 19.34. And there's another quote here. Cursed is anyone who withholds justice from the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow, then all the people shall say, Amen. You know, they always pepper in those kind of like uh, churchy portions when they, when they get done with these divine pronouncements. But anyway, that was from Deuteronomy, you know, 2719. And uh, there's, there's another one here. When they were few in number or of little account and strangers in the land wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. So that's, you know, from 1 Chronicles 16, 19 through 22. <laughs> you know, I'm no Bible expert, but we're starting to see a theme here. And here's another one. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. For those who don't know, lame means basically handicapped or whatever term you care to use, whatever term is currently in vogue. But back then they, you know, just might call somebody lame or crippled or, or something like that. Just so you know. But anyway, I'll say that again. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy and I championed the cause of the stranger. I broke the fangs of the unrighteous and made them drop their prey from their teeth. So that's from Job 29, 15 through 17. And what do you know? There's even another one. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. That's from one of the Psalms. You know, there's also uh, the fact that the Bible urged people to abandon or abandon their personal possessions and give them to the needy. You know, sort of like, you know, you might say Karl Marx on steroids or something like that. So it says in Matthew 
Then Jesus said to his said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So that's some that's some rich bashing right there. You know, some <laughs> some anti anti billionaire talk. What is this, Bernie Sanders or some shit? No, that's that's you know, the Jesus character as depicted in the Bible, trash talking the wealthy and, you know, capitalists, you know, exploiters, etc. You know, that's that's not Karl Marx. That's that's the J man, you know. Uh, so the Bible apparently does the exact opposite of Republicans. It regularly praises immigrants including aliens. They even use the specific term alien. And the Bible bashes the rich. You know, sh shouldn't this debate be over already if these people are really so devout and so quick to uh, read from the Bible and say we need law based on the Bible? Well, ironically, if they had some, you know, of the, of the Bible guiding the law, well... It would actually be like a, a communist society, actually. Like, ironically. I mean, obviously there are parts of the Bible that pretty much everyone on Earth would strongly disagree with if they tried to somehow adopt those ideas into policy. But nevertheless, there are some outright Marxist elements within the Bible itself. Also, if we're talking about Bible passages, what would the Bible say about teaching our children anything that might contain sexually explicit content. You know, a lot of these people are, you know, they're really keen on saying that uh, pornography or, you know, like filth has replaced, you know, biblical teachings and whatnot. But, uh, oh, wait a second. The Bible itself has some sexually explicit content that by conservative zone standards should logically be banned from a child's access. So if you don't believe me, well, here's really a very strong example of exactly what I'm talking about. So this passage says, There she lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys and whose emission was like that of horses. So one needn't modernize it to properly understand what that means. But to be absolutely clear, that means she remembered her lover with the penis like a donkey and a flood of semen like a horse. You know, that's uh, from Ezekiel, passage 2320, I guess. You know, that's uh, porn talk right there. You obviously can't allow that in a school library by the conservative standards. I mean, she's talking about a, a, a guy's giant cock and how much jizz comes out of it. You know, that's not even me being gross or even me being humorous. It's right there in the Bible. That, is, again, it's a passage about a guy's schlong and how much, you know, jizz comes out. <laughs> It's right there in the Bible, folks. I mean, I'm not making that up. I'm not saying that to be gross or awkward. It's, you know, I didn't put that in the Bible. <laughs> you know, that's just one of those juicy details. Also, for more Republican hypocrisy, and as I've noted plenty of times before, you know, uh, as far as like the uh, the constant concerns about grooming and you know, uh, perversion throughout society. Let's not forget that Donald Trump not only knew and partied with Jeffrey Epstein, but had repeatedly publicly expressed lust over his own daughters and did so on national television. That would be incestuous lust for his own daughter, and not just on Howard Stern, where he actually agreed it's okay to call his daughter Ivanka a piece of ass, Go ahead and find that clip. It's it's available. You can find it. But he also appeared on The View, where Trump confessed, 
I've said if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. Now, again, if it, if it was just like once, you know, you a, a person might be fair-minded about it and say, okay, he just said something awkward about his daughter. You know, he's trying to clumsily say that she's an attractive woman or, or beautiful or whatever. You know, I think I think a lot of people, they might be willing to forgive like one instance of that or something like that. But, you know, it's it's a repeated thing. And it didn't even end there. There's an interview with Robin Leach where Trump said of his other infant daughter, at the time she was an infant, uh, she said that she has Marla Maple's legs, then added, we don't know if she's got this part yet. Well, cupping his hands by his chest to signify breasts. But he said, time will tell. So again, we don't know if she's got this part yet, but time will tell. So obviously, if Trump is going to express lust for one daughter, why would he stop at just one? Why why not sexualize an infant too, you know? We're talking about only the best and brightest here, folks, you know? He's <laughs> he's 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 got to, you know, get all of his uh gross comments out there because, you know, that's surely what an what an intelligent person would do, you know, on national television. And, uh, you know, this was also, this was also before the time of deep fakes and stuff like that, where it would have been at least considerably harder for such things to be, you know, faked and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So these were real quotes. And, you know, as, as far as I can remember, I actually saw one of them on the Howard Stern show uh, back when that was on E! Television. I think I might have seen the premiere when Trump was a guest on there way back in the 1990s at some point. And yeah, that was, you know, pretty gross. But there was another time, too, also on, you know, on his daughter Ivanka. He was on the Wendy Williams show with her there and... Wendy Williams innocently asked Ivanka and Trump what they have in common, and Ivanka's answer was either real estate or golf, which is fair enough, normal answer. But Trump's answer was sex. See, yes, he said sex is what he has in common with his daughter. Um, that's not normal. So that's probably, you know, the most on the nose and weirdest exact. That's in some ways, even weirder than the, you know, the comment about his infant daughter, because, you know, that could just be seen as more like a joke or something. But th this this one, I don't know. I, it's hard. It's harder to wiggle out of this as like a, a serious problem kind of comment, um, because, you know, like if he's joking about his infant daughter, it might be construed as just him being a goofball or something but why would he say sex you know as what he has most in common with Ivanka that's very strange but you know that's that's the family values crowd for you also let's not forget about Randy Kaufman a Republican who was busted whacking off near a preschool or how about Dennis Hastert the longest serving Republican speaker of the house who only served a 13-month sentence. And gee, I wonder why that might be. And there are really so many other examples of, you know, creepy Republicans engaging in this kind of behavior, um, actual sexual assault and stuff like that, you know, just offensive kind of behavior. And you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a partisan hack here. I, I admit that Democrats can do this exact same kind of stuff, you know. But when they do, they tend to um, uh, not only condemn the individual for it, but, you know, they're actually quick to call it out themselves. And it's the Republican Party overall who tends to portray the Democrats, you know, the opposing party, as being the party of perverts. Um, but they have all these kind of weird things in their background. And I've, I haven't gone over nearly everything that it could have. 
So as I've wondered before, where is QAnon when it comes to such Republicans or when it comes to all the church-related molestation scandals? How about Herschel Walker actually paying for multiple abortions? And uh, what about the conservative Duggar family member who recently had an abortion? I don't really know if I'm pronouncing that last name right. Is it Duggar or Dugar? It's something like that, but I know it's a religious family that was on TV. So, you know, that was another sex scandal, and that was a prominent one, too. You know, the uh, seemingly appropriately named Jim Bob, Jim Bob Duggar, a former Republican member of the Arkansas House of Representatives, he turned into a reality TV star for the supposedly impressive feat of having so many kids. But he had molested some girls when he was a teenager, including members of his own family. And sure, a person might say, but he was himself under 18 at the time. But the point is simply that he's not quite the pure, unadulterated, innocent little lamb that so many of these Christians pretend to be. And really, you know, again, I'm trying not to be a partisan hack here. You know, if basically if any person of any walk of life or political persuasion tries to convince you that they're perfect and completely unflawed and they've never, you know, done an, anything outrageous or said anything outrageous. I, I personally don't trust that kind of person, you know, when a person acts like they're holier than thou. That raises an eyebrow for me because it's like they're putting up a front or a disguise. And, you know, maybe, maybe sometimes it is genuine. Um, but in quite a lot of cases, you know, these people are just trying to look like they're better than they really are to prop themselves up and, you know, kind of make it seem like they could never do anything wrong. Don't look at me. You know, it's, it's really in a way like the whole Ted Bundy thing, you know, how he pretended to be, you know, innocent and such an upstanding guy and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's really the same kind of thing. It might not be always as dramatic as like a serial killer, but, you know, there's there's definitely some overlap. And basically, if you put up a front of being perfect and holy and without sin, I don't trust you. In fact, the eldest son from that reality TV series family named Josh Duggar was also in trouble for molesting children, believe it or not doing so when he was about 14 or 15 years old. So I guess that's like father like son. And he was busted by U.S. Marshals on charges of receiving and possessing child pornography. Only he was not a teenager at that time, from what I understand. And, uh, you know, it, it goes on. The, uh, you know, the scandal ball keeps rolling. Josh Duggar was associated with the Family Research Council, an organization that lobbies against access to pornography, embryonic stem cell research, abortion, divorce, like divorce is such a controversial thing, apparently, to some of these people, and of course, LGBT rights, such as anti-discrimination laws, same-sex marriage, same-sex civil unions, and LGBT adoption, because Nothing says small government like telling you that you're unable to get married to the person you love or unable to adopt a child, etc., etc. And, you know, th this was a case of, you know, an actual pedophile, you know, telling gay parents that, oh, you can't you can't have your kids. You know, it, it, you can't make this up. You can't make this stuff up. It's just so hypocritical. And, uh, you know. It's really just the standard Republican bullshit. So much hypocrisy, you have to, you know, you, you have to research it to fully believe it and grasp all of the implications. And, you know, it, it just never ends. So maybe the Family Research Council should research its own members' families before pointing its dirty little paws at anybody else. And we could go on here and, you know, it's like an endless tale. Lauren Boebert's husband was arrested for apparently whipping his cock out in a bowling alley to show it to some girls. 
at least one of which was apparently underage. And, uh, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, to her credit, I, I haven't heard of her actually, you know, being involved with anyone underage in any sexual way. But while we're talking so much about the need for a national divorce, and she's wagging her phony moral finger at others, you know, she, she had her own divorce after having multiple flings with a tantric sex guru. And honestly, how desperate was that guy? You know, it's like I I'm still I'm still waiting, you know, for the tell all book about that, but the guy's probably far too embarrassed. I uh, I definitely wouldn't be able to come out of the closet as somebody who was uh sharing a bed or whatever the hell, maybe exercise equipment with Marjorie Taylor Green. Oh man. You know, I think I think I'd prefer my own palm over that kind of experience, frankly, you know, <laughs> I, I couldn't, I just couldn't imagine that. That's such a, uh, you know, so that the, the, the hypocrisy is an ever winding road and it really leads to nowhere or at least nowhere good. Still, these Republicans will always prefer us to look over at someone else rather than themselves Perhaps, perhaps because they psychologically have to, you know. And like I said, they're they're not all like pedophiles. I'm not saying that. I'm not, you know, going down that road exactly. But a lot of the time, you know, there's there's something in the closet, some skeleton in the closet that they're trying to hide. And there's a quote, perhaps wrongly attributed to Mark Twain. He said, it ain't what you know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. And the Republican Party is brimming with wannabe experts who don't really know even a fraction of what they claim expertise on. And it's been embarrassment after embarrassment. So why do they have so much money and power if they are so dumb and hypocritical and strange overall? Well, because our system has a long-standing habit of rewarding such liars and charlatans. Individually, a person will drift to the right if they're the type of person who says, I did my own research, but they never actually do any actual meaningful research. More than likely, he or she has never thought about an issue with other people from other viewpoints before and has never come to an agreement with those people to reach a conclusion on it on an issue you know they they just take the uh easy way they find a source that they think is like perfect or whatever and that's that's their source of truth well anyway that's the end of part one i've got another part coming up in just a moment <laughs> 